Hello, everyone, and let me personally thank you again for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. You know, abortion is probably one of the hottest topics and biggest debates in our history. As of today, abortions have claimed the lives of over 60 million unborn babies. And in the event that Roe versus Wade is overturned, we may stand to face a new law that will penalize women for having an illegal abortion. Should this be supported or should it not? Well, who better to discuss this than Rose Mims from Arkansas Right to Life? So stay tuned. Arkansas Alive starts right now. Again, thank you for joining us for this special program with my special guest, Rose Mims. Now, Rose, you've been on here many times before. And when you called me and told me about this uh, criminal penalties for women who obtain an illegal abortion, I thought, oh, I want you to tell this to our audience. People need to know about this. Now, let me open up with this, and then I want you to explain it. In the event that Roe versus Wade is reversed or overturned, oh, will there be criminal, criminal penalties for women who have an illegal abortion? Is this something that would happen here in Arkansas? Criminal penalties? Well, it's a possibility, but Arkansas Right to Life is taking a firm stand, as our National Right to Life uh, organization is, and many other pro-life organizations, that no, we do not support criminalizing, punishing women who have an abortion, illegal or otherwise. Right. Well, you, when you explained it to me and, and asked me what I thought about it, I immediately came upon uh, the scripture where the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, and everybody wanted to stone her, and <laughs> Jesus said, he that's without you, throw the first stone, and they all drop their rocks. And he said to her, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. Punishment for the, well, if, if, if abortion becomes illegal in a crime, but punishment for the procedure is not what Arkansas Right to Life is about. We're not about punitive. We're about saving lives. It's, it's an act of love. It's an act of life to protect the unborn. It's not about punishing the mother, right? That's right. And I'd, I'd like to read uh, what Arkansas Right to Life did was sign on to a letter that our National Right to Life organization put together along with all of our sister affiliates, 50 of them, right. and then 20 other national pro-life leaders across our country in response to a bill in Louisiana that was seeking to pass a trigger law like the one we have here in Arkansas, right. that when Roe versus Wade is overturned, they will have no abortions in Louisiana. However, their law, their legislation, wanted to add criminal penalties for the woman who sought an illegal abortion. And we opposed that. And this letter <laughs> was sent to the Louisiana legislature and really to all of the legislatures around our nation, giving them warning or notice yeah. is a better word, that we would oppose it. Right. And in fact, once the letter you know, was seen by the Louisiana State Assembly, that those provisions were struck yeah. from the legislation. They passed their trigger law, and um, when Roe versus Wade does is overturned and Louisiana has a law that says abortion is illegal, there will not be any criminal penalties against that mother. However, we've had a lot of backlash because of we because we signed the letter. And I just want to read a couple yeah, of things from do. the letter. And this is available on our website for anybody who wants to go and read the entire letter that was sent and who signed it. Okay. So this is a statement from uh, the president of National Right to Life. She says, and I quote, there are two victims in every abortion, the unborn child who lo loses her life and her mother who is left abandoned by the abortion industry to deal with any physical complications, as well as the emotional and psychological pain of the abortion trauma for months or even years to come, said Carol Tobias, president of National Right to Life. 
this joint letter recognizes that women who have abortions require our compassion and support, not criminalization. Yeah. And then the letter uh, goes on to say, as national and state pro-life organizations, representing tens of millions of pro-life men, women, and children across the country, let us be clear. We state unequivocally that any measure seeking to criminalize or punish women is not pro-life, and we stand firmly opposed to such efforts. So, You know, and, and of course this is just my unprofessional response, but to me that is overreach, that is overreacting. Yes, we don't want children to be killed, but punishing or threatening the mother with criminal and prison sentences is not the deterrent that you want to use. You want to educate the people. You want to show them that there is another way. This is a life you're taking. And uh, I know that's a, it's a hard, it, it takes the wisdom of Solomon to know what to do in cases like this. But thank you for presenting this to our viewing audience. Now, what can our viewing audience do to assist, to help? where this is concerned. Well, we're trying to educate right now about okay. this issue because we know from over 50 years of experience dealing with abortion, legal and un illegal, right. that women were never charged in a crime of abortion when it was illegal. It was always the, the person who did the abortion, right. who performed it. And, um, and we know that women suffer. Yeah. Most women. I mean, there are women, I've met women who say that the abortion decision was a good one for them, or they didn't say that. They said it was the best decision I could make at that time for whatever reason. However, I still know that more women than not suffer from that yeah. abortion decision because more often it is because they don't have support, number one. Right. They're in a situation <laughs> that is not um, desirable for that child to be in, whether it's a unmarried woman or a married woman who's had an affair, you know, yeah. or someone who's been the victim of rape or incest, you know, that uh, in those, those circumstances, our trigger law only allows for life of the mother, the exceptions. Right. But not criminal prosecution for the woman that has an abortion. I, I would think that would terrify uh, the woman. Now, Rose mentioned about the consequences of abortion. Education is a process and it's taken a long time, but here's what you need to know. You might be thinking about abortion. Maybe you know someone or have compassion on someone. Here's a video we want you to watch. It's called what, Rachel's story? or It's Helen's story Helen's, from Project Rachel. A, a Helen's story from Project Ra uh, Rachel. Watch this and we'll be right back. I came to America in 1978, got involved with someone. I thought it was a really committed relationship. I found myself pregnant, and as I was thinking, you know, I need to let him know that I'm pregnant, I saw him literally walking out with another woman, and I was just devastated. What am I going to do? You know, I live in a country, I don't have any family here, and devastated the next day I was talking to my roommate, and she suggested having an abortion. I had an abortion, and um, the day of my abortion, I remember saying, I killed my baby. At the time, I was working as a OB-GYN nurse uh, in labor and delivery. After my abortion, I remember going to help move a patient who had just delivered a baby from the gurney to the bed, and I froze. And what it was for me, it was the pain of that seeing this woman with a baby and I not having a, my child. My conscience was eating at me. And um, I started drinking heavily. Just went down a very dark place. 
When I had my abortion, I thought there's no way, nobody would ever want me. And what I came across was this woman given a testimony about her abortion and God's grace in her life. And I remember listening to her story and thinking, man, I'd love to be like that. I'd love to be where she is. I went to, to church and there was this Project Rachel brochure. I picked it up and I called. And I went to a 12 week period of time. What it helped me to see is that I had taken a life, but God is not condemning me. I needed to realize that God can forgive me. I was condemning myself. When we heal from abortion, we don't just heal from the pain of abortion, but we heal from so many other things that we have held on to over the years. We are forgiven. God loves us. So let's move forward and not live in shame and guilt. That's not where he wants us. We were made for better. I think it's very interesting that abortion does affect the mother. Even though she may be told it's just tissue, it's just a blob, it's not a child, it's not a person. But you heard uh, Helen say, I've condemned myself because I had taken a life. And that's what a, a Arkansas Right to Life is all about. It's about life. It's, it's, you know, you hear this bannered back and forth. It's not about choice. It's about life. It's about Arkansas Right to Life exists to protect the life of the unborn that has no voice of their own. They can't speak for themselves. So we're taking that position to speak for the unborn and to protect their life. And how do we protect the unborn? We do it by protecting their mothers. Yeah. Because the, the mothers who seek out abortion, most of the time... Oh, like I said before, because they lack support of the, the father or their family, right. you know, or they're young or they're old or whatever the reason, because if, you know, there's a the situation there that they think that by ending the pregnancy will solve their problems. Yeah. And so many times that's not the case. Yeah. They still have problems and the, uh, the abortion just adds to their problems. And we have seen through studies, through reports, the trauma that that these women do experience after an, an abortion. And our movement is full of women and men now who are speaking up and speaking out and have been for the past 50 plus years yeah. that abortion hurt them yeah. and that they want and they are involved in our movement. And so we, we just cannot um, punish women when they are victims themselves in this whole abortion tragedy that we've had for 50 plus years. So the educational part and process of Arkansas Right to Life is not just to educate the community about abortion, it's to educate mothers yes. that they have a choice in this matter and uh, they can choose not to abort their child. They won't have the guilt and the condemnation but that brings up another question. I hesitate to ask you this. I don't want to put you on the spot. But in the event that the reverse of weight is overturned reverse, which it probably will be, and we go to states' rights and so forth, and there are no more abortions in Arkansas, what's going to happen to all those babies that are going to be born that would not have been born had they been aborted? Who's going to take care of those babies? <laughs> Well, their mothers and their fathers will take care of many of them, you know, because women will have their babies. Yeah. Now, for those mothers who can't, you know, we have the Safe Haven Baby uh, Program, you know, in Arkansas, <laughs> Safe Haven Law, where they can uh, surrender an infant 30 days or younger to a fire station, a police station. And we have the baby boxes that they can do it anonymously, you know, um, and, and those babies will be adopted. That's, there you go. Now, that's, that is what will happen to them. That's what I'm after. Uh, the, the church or somebody's going to have to step up and say, okay, we're going to take ownership of this. We got rid of abortion on demand, but now we're going to have to step up 
and take an active part and support both financially, spiritually, emotionally, these mothers and adopt these babies. Right. And our mission has always been educational, changing yeah. hearts and minds. So we want to work with women who are pregnant and don't want to be for whatever reason to uh, change their hearts and minds to give life to their child, not to go to another state to have an abortion because there right. will be states where they'll be able to do that. And they did that before, you know, when abortion was illegal in Arkansas. They went to other states. Those who were that desperate to do it. But we're hoping uh, with what we will be doing, the pro-life movement in Arkansas and throughout the country in states where it's illegal, we will be stepping up providing services to those mothers. And Arkansas okay. has already gone a long way in that, passing the Every Mom Matters Act last session uh, that gives women who are pregnant and seeking abortion or not yeah. just viable resources for whatever their needs are to continue that pregnancy and well, deliver I, that child. I think, Rose, that we, we could see uh, uh, almost a revival uh, ministering to these mothers in uh church members and churches and organizations stepping up to adopt these children. Here's how you can contact Arkansas Right to Life. Write this information down, go online and uh, dialogue uh, with Rose and with the staff there. Here's Arkansas Right to Life, Box 1697-1697, uh, Little Rock 72203, there's the phone number, area 501-663-4237. Uh, the email is A-R-T-L at, oh, I'm having a hard time reading, at, no, A-R-T at A-R-T-L dot org. And there it is at the, at the bottom, A-R-T-L dot org. So make contact, call, visit, support. <clears throat> if you want to help Arkansas Right to Life, they're always out there working in the community uh, for you, for us. So they need your financial support as well. You might want to support them as a, as a missions project, uh, it, your church, your Sunday school class, your Bible study, whatever you can do uh, will be a, a great blessing. And Rose is not, uh, she's not shy. She can ask you <laughs> to support, but you need to take that as a compliment because uh, they do need uh, uh, help. Now, we have a full-page graphic with all the post-abortion recovery sources that are available. So can we put that up there now, this, if you're pregnant, if you want to know these things? Here's some of the information. There is on the screen, deeper still, uh, call or text, area 501-944-7142. Uh, God's deepest still, uh, is that correct? Dot org. Go deeper still. Dot Go org. deeper still. Dot org. That is a um, a retreat. Okay. That is free to women or men who have had an abortion. Uh, wounded heart, they call okay. it, and for them to get, uh, I mean, intense healing and uh, it's just I've heard nothing but good things about Go Deeper Still. Good. So there's the information. Put it back up there again because I didn't get to the second one there. Uh, Project Rachel, call or text 501 663, uh, help me out here, 0996, or call or text, or uh, go uh, to www.hopeafterabortion.org. Thank you. You got your glasses <laughs> on. <laughs> or call the number that's on the screen. Uh, international uh, Helpline for Abortion Recovery. All these are uh, provided for those of you that are considering abortion. Uh, if, you're, if you're the father of the child, if you're the mother of the child, don't accept the lie that it's just tissue and it doesn't matter. It's a person. It's a human being. And uh, we need to do everything that we can to not only save the life, but to help the mother. And so I uh, appreciate you. Now, there are several international helplines for abortion recovery. Yes, and I want to point out that that one that we had, you had on your screen is a 24-7 live person that they get. And that okay. is for any uh, uh, person who has an abortion in their past, 
that they are having uh, trouble, you know, getting healing from or uh, forgiveness from, you know, that that, that is, um, it's international. So it, they take calls from everywhere and okay. anywhere. So all of those ministries that we had on the screen are for post-abortion healing. And it's free. Typically it's free. And, and we very seldom hear any talk about the men, the fathers, the ones that have impregnated the women and there are the father of the child that's considered uh, for abortion. So uh, do men suffer the effects of abortions? They do. And our past, uh, our March for Life this year had two testimonies from fathers of aborted uh, babies, and it was very powerful. And I got so many compliments, you know, that it was time that we hear from the fathers. Right. And both of those men are going to be speaking at the National uh, convention, which is later this month in um, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, giving their testimony there. And their testimonies, I believe, are on our website uh, under the 2022 March for Life. So anybody okay. can go on there and, and hear their testimonies. They suffer, I think, sometimes worse than the mother because their hands are tied. Um, even if you're a married man and your wife gets pregnant, she can go and have an abortion without your knowledge or consent. Oh, and okay. it's just tragic, a lot yeah. of tragic situations out there. <clears throat> well, again, I think it's time for everybody to take ownership of this and step up to the plate. I saw a piece on, the, uh, on VTN, I think it was either 700 Club or CBN News, where a group of men, fathers, it was a place like Chicago or somewhere where there's a lot of crime, a lot of gangs, and the fathers were saying, okay, it's time for us to step up and become the fathers to the fatherless. Wow, that is so Bible, so scriptural. All of the kids that are in the gangs, no father. So these fathers are going to step up. There's a whole group of them, maybe dozens or hundreds of them. And they've decided to become fathers to these fatherless kids. Awesome, because they're going to, mentor them, train them, father them. Well, that's what you're going to have to do uh, to these mothers and fathers. The men, you know, I, I, do you have services specifically for men? Yes, I, I brought you some literature <laughs> yeah. that is for men. But, but we they have, can get that by calling your office. Yes, and we have those <laughs> resources on our website. But okay. I want to visit, if we could just briefly uh, talk about the leak yes. that came out of the Supreme Court earlier in May yes. that said that, you know, that the justices were looking to for a full overturn of Roe versus Wade and, and Casey, uh, the Casey decision that, that um, was decided after Roe that just affirmed Roe, but in a different way, okay. changing uh, the, the standard to viability instead of trimester and also uh, adding the undue burden of abortion. Um, so the leak, you know, indicates really good, the good, the best outcome that we had been hoping for, the full yeah. reversal of Roe versus Wade. So that's why Arkansas did so much groundwork right. in this event that this would happen. And we are very happy. However, we know that abortion will still be legal in about half of the country. So our work is not over right. any, by any means. We're still going to be educating. But um, we feel it was leaked for nefarious reasons, you know, to cause chaos. And we have yeah. seen lots of chaos and, <clears throat> you know, uh, protest. Even at the Supreme Court, justices the House themselves, death threats, those kinds of things. So it's clear to me that that was done in order to sway the court's opinion or, you know, their decision. We, we pray that that does not happen, that if this is the path they've chosen, that they proceed and deal with whoever leaked that information right. because that was a very egregious act <clears throat> on their part and they, there will be consequences for that. The other side, the pro-abortion um, movement as a whole has, you know, threatened a, uh, a summer of rage, yeah. you know, once the decision comes down, which we expect will be the end of June. And, um, you know, we just have to, I think they will calm down eventually and just start working, but they will be working. They'll be working to change the law here in Arkansas to add rape and incest and criminal penalties probably. But that's, that's something we'll fight 
and um, that, but that will happen all over the country. You know, the states that have abortion rights, they will take care of it to the extreme. Yeah. Want to abort babies for any reason with no protection <laughs> whatsoever. Right. And uh, so, you know, we've got our work cut out for us, uh, but we still do expect that the Supreme Court will overturn Rose versus Wade. How long have you been leading Arkansas Right to Life, Rose? About 30 years. 30? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I have silver hair it's, now. <laughs> it's, still, it's still a long way. I mean, you're, even if the Roe versus Wade is overturned, you've still got a, a, a lifetime of work to do. So I, I want you all to pray for, for Rose and pray for Arkansas Right to Life because she, this is one lady that is committed. She's taken ownership. And it's not always been easy uh, for her. Uh, you would think, oh, everybody loves Rose. Everybody's going to be on the bandwagon for Arkansas Right to Life. Not so. Not so. so be sure and pray for her. Support her if you can, if you would like to. And uh, pray for Arkansas Right to Life. And let's, uh, let's end up on this. Um, well, you've already... Uh, addressed it. Will ending Roe versus Wade make abortions stop happening in the state of Arkansas? Well, it will, they will be, it will be illegal to yeah. have it. Uh, the only exception will be life of the mother, you right. know, in those rare cases, and they're very rare, you know, that the mother, and then you don't kill the baby to save the mother. You try to treat the mother for whatever accident or illness that she has. And if the baby dies a result, as a result, you didn't intentionally kill the baby. Right. You know, we're trying to save yeah. the mother. Okay. So, you know, it's those kind of cases. I want you to put her contact information back up on the screen for our viewers. P.O. Box 1697, Little Rock 72203, Area 501-663-4237. And uh, there's the web, the website, ARTL.org. So go online, make contact. It's time, Arkansas, for you to get involved and be committed and take ownership of what happens in our state and support Rose, support Arkansas Right to Life. Thank you, Rose, for being here and explaining all this to us. And remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever in the world you're watching. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.